Yo, it's your boy DC Tree, and this is DC True Dash Nation, the channel on YouTube that covers hoops and heroes. And today we're talking heroes. We talking that Loki series, y'all. And I'm gonna take some time to explain the ending after I express my feelings on this great show, man. I had no qualms with this show. It was an awesome show, but to be honest, the ending was frustrating as hell because of the characters, man. These damn Lokis had me scratching my head. These damn Lokis had me screaming. No! These two right here, man, their decision making was just so terrible. Their deductive reasoning skills was terrible, man. I was just watching the show like, no, God, no, God, please, no. Like y'all honestly about to go against a godlike character with some damn swords like are you like are you serious man like are you serious right now but before i jump too deep into it if you like my content please sub to the channel <laughs> okay guys this video will have spoilers obviously because of the title of this video okay so you have been warned okay the big reveal for this episode was the fact that king the conqueror showed up played by my dog jonathan majors you should be familiar with him from lovecraft country on hbo all right we knew he was going to play king but we didn't think he was going to appear until ant-man 3 so seeing him in loki was awesome you know there were rumors that he may be in this episode hints to here and there but i didn't expect him to be in the episode well most of the ep most of the episode which i thought was pretty darn cool all right but in mcu fashion they did throw you a curveball with this version of king the conqueror the version in the comics is considered prime king and prime king is a bad boy okay to keep things short and sweet he's essentially someone from i believe the 30th 31st century um he's traveled to the 40th century he has technology from the 40th century and just to give you context we're in the 21st century now so he is way ahead of the curve when it comes to um tech you know way ahead of black panther way ahead of iron man so right there his technology alone makes him a problem but the real weapon he has is his intellect he is very intelligent very smart and he is you know obsessed with destroying the avengers so i think it's pretty clear he's going to be the next thanos for the mcu his intellect his tech provides him with the ability of flight um super strength um blast um energy blast pulses you name it he pretty much can do any and all things and in mcu fashion they explained perfectly seamlessly to why he was not already trying to conquer earth already trying to conquer thanos it's because this variant although he's still somewhat evil he's less evil than prime king okay he's fighting back you know the evil versions of himself okay all right and i loved how you know uh, the MCU used this variant to kind of put the spotlight back on the Lokis, back on Sylvie, back on Loki himself. Like, hey, you guys are evil too. You guys are, have done terrible things. Don't judge me because I'm, you know, manipulating the timeline. Don't judge me because, you know, a variant dies here and there. Don't judge me because what I'm holding back, what I'm doing, the service I'm providing is keeping Prime King and a thousand others just like him away from the timeline, away from this world, away from conquering everything. Very compelling character, you know, very compare, uh, compelling story. And that's what makes it so in interesting. And that's why Loki was trying to stop Sylvie. Like, yo, wait a minute. Like, he's making a whole lot of sense. We have to think this through before we kill him. He may be trying to hold back someone worse, someone with greater power, someone with worse intentions. You cannot kill him, okay? Because here we are in this man's office with a couple knives and some magic tricks, and he's dodging everything we throw at him, okay? 
he has to be telling the truth. He, it, this makes sense. But Sylvie and her dumb behind is a family show, so I'm not going to curse. Could not see the bigger picture, man. This whole episode just had so many biblical themes. You get what I'm saying? Not to get too spiritual on y'all and start preaching, but this has so many biblical themes. It just had Adam and Eve written all over it all over it man for those of you not familiar with the tale the idea is that eve you know eats the forbidden fruit from um the tree and the garden of good and evil that god provided you know adam and eve to live in forever a paradise he's like hey you can mess with anything else in this garden except that tree but her curiosity you know her impulsiveness you know her emotion got in the way and she made a decision a bad decision at the end of the day and this is very reminiscent with this situation loki trying to be level-headed trying to be uh, objective and she was not hearing it but then loki he deserves some criticism too because he put his guard down he had her on the ropes put his guard down for a kiss him kissing himself technically oh my god and then he got duped this same theme could be presented in the relationship between ravana and morbius morbius comes to her tells her yo timekeepers fake revariance re you know timekeepers are f um you know robotic you know they, we don't even know who's at the top we don't know who we're working for this thing needs to stop and ravana she's so emotionally attached to the tva so emotionally attached to her cause that she refuses to listen to reason and she goes searching for you know the the head honcho in charge which just has been killed you know well not just killed but it's going to eventually be killed by Siv sylvie anyway so she's not going to meet that king the conqueror she's going to meet the new guy okay now this isn't too far removed from the comics uh, Ravana in this series is very different from the one in the comics, but at the same time, Ravana in the comics had a romantic relationship somewhat with King the Conqueror. So the idea that she goes searching for him and that she's so blindly dedicated to the TVA and blindly dedicated to the cause they were fighting for makes sense. So she will appear again probably as Kang the Conqueror's queen or uh, uh, something like that of that nature. So that's not very far-fetched. Okay, back to Loki. Loki lets his guard down. Sylvie tricks him. Throws him back to the TVA, okay? Then she kills the good Kang or the goodish Kang, okay? He tells her, hey, you know, i see you in a few. Now, she's dumb because... Why would this Joker let you kill him with no resistance if he was, if all this was a trick, if all this was fake? So I think she kind of realizes it after she does it, that she did the wrong thing. So Loki goes back to the TVA, realizes Kang is in charge now. Statues, you know, because that's always a good thing. You know, people who want statues of themselves <laughs> is always a good thing. So apparently another king has come through and wiped the memories of the variants that used to be Loki's friends, like Mobius. You get what I'm saying? But it may not even be the Mobius we know. He could have just came through, killed everybody, and just got different variants, created different variants. So Loki is on the verge of getting arrested, and then they end this for, you know, for the season. And they reveal that it's going to be a season two. Now, what's interesting about this was I was surprised they had a season two because I didn't think they would have enough time to do a season two because King the Conqueror is set to show up in Ant-Man 3, Quantum Mania, okay? But I looked that up. That doesn't come out till February 2023. So in theory, they have about a year if they need it to premiere a Loki season two which will undoubtedly have a huge, um, you know, role for King the Conqueror. You get what I'm saying? Awesome way to end the show. Awesome way to preserve the character. Sylvie and Loki, are they going to get back together as far as trying to fight against King? Can they do anything? 
what can they do where will loki go what is his role is he going to finally unlock his true potential his true powers it's so many questions man and that's a, that's the marking of a good show leaving us wanting more leaving us you know thirsty for more so i can't wait man it's a lot of improvements they can do in season two especially with the fights but i feel like all that is coming in time taking all that into account i have to give it an eight out of ten for the first season love the, the turns and the twists and the mysterious nature of the film but well of the show but it was missing that action aspect to it so hopefully they work on that all right guys that's it for this one check out the other videos on the channel sorry i ran long today and i will catch you in the next one peace